Time for an overview. It was late last night. The culprit was in the empty room on the fourth floor. The culprit was preparing the seance murder they had planned. Seance murder? All right. To use the floorboard as a seesaw, they had to cut the cross piece supporting it. The plan was to make the same preparations for all three empty rooms. This would divert suspicion away from the culprit and whoever picked a room. Unfortunately, I did a saw. The cross pieces, they needed a saw. I imagine they got one from the warehouse. How way too many items in the warehouse? They were planning to cut the cross pieces in all three rooms. Then Andrew walked strolling by. Hmm? However, something. when the culprit was working on the middle room, the unexpected happened. He must have heard the song. She walked in on Angie walked into that room and saw the culprit making their preparations. Big mistake. She needed some fire for the ritual and had gone to the room for a candle. At that point, the culprit had not finished the setup and was just cutting cross pieces. Angie might not have concluded that it was tied to some kind of murder plan, but now that Angie had seen it, the culprit couldn't use the seesaw trick. Any other person might have just given up, but not our culprit. Oh, she was getting the candle. Supposedly. The culprit took the floorboard they loosened and struck the unsuspecting Angie in the head. One fourth trauma. No knocking her unconscious. Her head the head from the bleeding. Around Angie's injury to stop the bleeding. From the tripping. Using a trail. Then they picked up her unconscious body and carried her to a research lab. And tied most of it, except for one piece. While she was unconscious, the culprit hurried to tie up this loose end. The sword of shooting consciousness. But because they were in a hurry, they made a crucial oversight. The tape they left didn't behind. notice the duct tape had peeled off and was under Angie's body. Without that evidence, we may never have figured out the culprit's trick. Katana. Carrying the supplies they needed, the culprit returned to the ultimate art lab. And the door and locking it temporarily. Locked the front door from inside. And dumped the blow. And took out the katana they brought from their own lab. Fair Angie. They then stabbed Angie in the back of the neck, finally killing her. This was not dead before. Then, to further confuse us, the culprit attempted to make a locked room mystery. First, they used rope from the warehouse and hung four effigies upside down. There were two reasons for this. To overwhelm the room with an occult atmosphere, and the other was the key to locking the room. The culprit stuck the katana into Kaede's effigy near the rear entrance. Mm -hmm. And spun the effigy around to twist up the rope. So he locked the door in the back as he exited. After enough turns, the culprit let go and headed for the rear door. Then we called him to spin. Motion. Once released, the effigy began spinning and the gold leaf katana with it. Similar one like in the first Dynapa. The handle of the katana.
Katana then hit the sliding lock. What a difficult trick! But remember that the lock was so loose it moved at the slightest touch. Yeah. The culprit also would have had the opportunity to attempt it many times. The full funny finishing. Once complete, the door was locked, but the duct tape was left behind. Crucial mistake. Perhaps the culprit noticed it, but by that point, it was too late. The room was sealed. There was no way for them to get back inside. Act three. Then, lock this open. morning, we opened up the room and discovered Angie's body. The shock and awe. Trying to prove one blood. The wasn't finished. They wanted one more murder. Cover their tracks. To do that, they manipulated us into performing this seance. A few of us. Act four. Three empty rooms. The middle one was chosen for the seance. I was invited by Kokichi to take Kibo's place in the seance. Another crucial mistake. Perhaps. Tenko volunteered to be the medium, but she never imagined it would get her killed. To perform the seance, the culprit claimed they needed something for Tenko. A stone. A small stone that Himiko had brought from the courtyard. Tenko, at the culprit's request, bowed her head until it was touching the stone. That position was instrumental in making sure the murder went as planned. Okay, and then the cage. Next, Kokichi and I placed the iron cage over Tenko in the middle of the magic circle. The yeah. culprit then volunteered to drape the white cloth over the iron cage. We didn't realize it at the time, but that was a deliberate decision by the culprit. They needed to set up the murder weapon that was used to kill Tenko. While they were covering the cage with a cloth, they secretly placed the sickle. At the top of it. Finally. Four of us placed the wooden statue on top of the cage. Both securing in place. Bud. The culprit used the weight of the statue to keep the murder weapon in place. Act five. Final After point. the preparations were complete, we began the seance. Blow up the candle. Kokichi and Shurichi. Darkness, we each stood in one corner and sang the Cage Child song. As we did. When the song finished, the soul of the dead was supposed to enter the medium. But, but our culprit had another plan to commit a murder in the darkness. darkness. Very elaborate. Right after we started singing, the culprit began making their way toward Tenko. It would have been quite difficult to do in total darkness, but our culprit had a guide. The salt. They used the lines of the magic circle drawn with salt. The, the culprit them. felt for the salt and used it to guide them along. But careful not to stir in the circle himself. When the culprit reached the center of the circle, the act was committed. No turning back. They found the floorboard that had its cross piece cut off the night before. And slammed. They lifted up their foot and stomped down hard on the floorboard. Thus. Oh. The floorboard lifted up like a seesaw. Pushed Tenko's body up toward the ceiling of the cage. And near the sickle. That's Tenko everywhere. was stabbed in the back of the neck by the sickle on the top of the cage. She was killed right before our eyes, and we didn't even see it. 
until you discover the dead body. Fine, cover the steps. After committing the crime, the culprit followed the salt back to their corner. They covered their tracks, and nothing happened. We lit the room. Finished the ritual, and had us light the candles. We followed the culprit's directions, and removed the equipment used for the seance. Half six. And we discovered Echo's body. Hit the middle with dropping it below the floor. While we were all focused on the body, the culprit picked up the sickle and dropped it under the floor through the hole in the corner of the room. Ironically, the final step of the murder was unwittingly carried out by us. The culprit had planned the murder so that we would unintentionally destroy some evidence. That evidence was the magic circle that the culprit used in mapping in the docking. All according to Prior. However, the culprit didn't know that Kibo had taken a picture. Prior to the event, and got the magic circle in photographic memory. It really saved us. Without that, we wouldn't know what changes were made to the circle. But now we know for certain. And we know the culprit drew the magic circle. Isn't that right, Kyo? <clears throat> Take that! Correct Yoshin Guji, the ultimate anthropologist. anthropologist. You're, You're the, the culprit, culprit behind, behind these murders. Checkmate. Complete! That's where my detective work leads us. It all fits. <laughs> Checkmate. Sweet child. There are times when it's necessary to admit defeat. And this is one of them. Admit. Yeah. Okay. So you finally admit you did it. No turn back now. That was one elaborately double murder. My one okay. regret, my only regret, was not being able to make 100 friends. 100 friends, that's a bit far fetched. <clears throat> 100 friends? Why do you mean 100 kills? It was my dream to make 100 friends. Oh, it's so unfortunate! I was so close to 100! He meant 100 kills or something. What are you talking about? I do not understand a word of this. It is pretty weird. Who gives a fuck? Let's vote for this kooky bastard and be done with this already! Yeah, I agree with you. Roger that! One voting, voting time. time! Coming up! Cast your votes. Yeah, no, Simon. You hear something? Nope. The heart racing excitement! There you go, Monochroma. Has the blackened and a spotless finally faced off? During knowing one of them. It's time! You know what to do. Come on, I'm so irritated. Time to place our votes. Fast running fast. Please wait for everyone else to process. Announcement. Now then, it seems the voting has finished. Let's see the result. Tally him up. Seventy-seven percent left. Results. The Black and Death Kurikyo Shinguji. Who will be chosen as the Black and? Will you make the right choice? 
Oh, the dreadfully wrong one. Verdict. And the blackened is. Cho is found guilty. Jackpot! Final results. And total dolly. Probably all I have B on this one or C. Go take the arrows I made. All rise. Dismissed. Dismissed. Perfect. So. Oh, another B. I'll take that. B's are passable. Here's a perfect retry means. And the amount of coins we earned, 148. Next. No, we're not going to retry. Very elaborate details. Seriously, you're correct again.